this video, we're going to be looking at the overall experience rating. But first, we have a couple of concepts that we need to address. The first is normal distribution. It would be extremely rare in life to come across a variable that is completely 100% normally distributed. However, many variables end up looking normally distributed-ish. For example, if you were to walk around your institution with a tape measure, collecting people's heights, and then you plotted them on a bar graph, it would probably end up looking something like this. Most people fall in the middle. Some are short, some are tall, but the more extremely short or the more extremely tall the variable gets, the less people fall into that category. Things tend to taper off in each direction. The same would be true if you were measuring IQ, number of hours slept per night, income, or many other variables. Let's say that the average person in this sample is five foot eight. Now imagine you're walking around measuring heights at your institution, but the tape measure that you have only goes up to five foot eight. So you grouped everyone that was taller than that into a category called greater than or equal to five foot eight. This category would be way larger than the others. Most of your data would be lumped to the far right. It isn't that we don't have people who are very tall or just kind of tall. We just don't have a tape measure that can distinguish them from people of average height. This brings us to our next concept, ceiling effect. Ceiling effects can occur when our instrument isn't sensitive enough to measure the differences between groups. Let's do a few examples. Imagine we are trying to measure knowledge. We have a program or an exhibit that's trying to teach people something. We give them a pretest, and 92% of our sample gets an A. Are these people so smart that they don't need to learn anything? Is there no room for improvement? Probably not. More than likely, our instrument is not sensitive enough to tease out the people who know a lot about the topic from people who don't. Then we give them a post-test. A's went up to 96%. We create a graph showing the changes in A's and B's and C's to F's from pre to post-test. Did our program make a difference? It's hard to tell, right? So what would we do to fix this problem? We would create an instrument that is better at separating groups of people that are different from each other. We would make the test a little more difficult. If we did that, we would end up with a pretest and a post-test graph that looks more like a normal curve. That way, when we compare pretest A's and B's to post-test A's and B's, we can see to what degree our program made a difference. In the future, if we make changes to that program, we can see to what degree those changes made a difference. Let's do another example. Imagine we're trying to measure behavior. Let's say we have a program or an exhibit with the goal of getting people to brush their teeth every day. So we create an instrument to measure whether or not that's happening. Would you look at that? Most of our sample brushes their teeth every day. Not much room for improvement. Oh well, right? Wrong. Again, the issue is that our instrument is not sensitive enough to separate groups of people from one another. So when we look at the post-test and we compare, we can't really see much of a difference. Did our program or exhibit have an effect? It's really hard to tell. To fix this issue, we would fix our instrument. We would extend the categories beyond seven to separate those that brush their teeth every day from those who brush their teeth more than that. That way, when we look at the data from before and after the program or exhibit, we can see to what degree it made a difference. Now let's get to the point. Satisfaction. These are real data from our 2015 customer satisfaction surveys. As you can see, we're experiencing a ceiling effect. Is it likely that 75% of our guests feel the exact same way about their visit, that they think it was perfect and there's absolutely no room for improvement? Probably not. Now let's look at 2016. Does this data mean that 2016 was a worse year for satisfaction? It's hard to say, right? This instrument isn't sensitive enough to show us whether there were any changes in visitor sentiment. So we have a problem. We're experiencing a ceiling effect. The instrument we are using to measure the visitor experience is not sensitive enough to separate our visitors into meaningful categories. We also have another problem. When creating instruments, we have to be really careful about what words we use because those words affect the validity of the instrument. Validity refers to whether or not an instrument measures what it claims to measure. What do we mean when we say satisfaction? 
in reality, satisfaction is based on two factors, expectation versus actual experience. Those that come in with a high expectation will interpret their level of satisfaction differently than those who came with low expectations. So without measuring those expectations, what are we learning from satisfaction? What are we really trying to measure? <clears throat> what we really want to know is how was the guest's overall experience? Dun dun da! Introducing the overall experience rating. In the overall experience rating, neutral changes to good, good changes to excellent, and excellent changes to superior. On our own, excellent and superior are similar, but in this context, superior is interpreted as beyond excellent. I went to a session on the overall experience rating at the Visitor Studies Association conference in 2017. The presenters were nice enough to share their slides with me. Overall experience rating has been used at the Smithsonian Institution for over 10 years and across more than 100 exhibitions. Andrew Peckerick is its champion and he has brought many institutions over to his side, including the Cleveland Museum of Art, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and the Denver Zoo, who were all co-presenters in the session. The overall experience rating is phrased as such. Please rate your overall experience at this museum, exhibit, or program with answers in order from least to greatest. Poor, fair, good, excellent, superior. They also Then they conducted an experiment comparing OER to other traditional scales, including a fully grounded scale, a numerical scale, and a bipolar scale. They gave out surveys that were entirely the same besides the provided scale in order to make, be able to make comparisons. As you can see, the traditional scales tend to show signs of a ceiling effect. Most responses fall into the category at the far end of the scale. However, when using the overall experience rating scale, we can see that responses now appear in more of a normal curve. We have succeeded in teasing out the differences between respondents in that top category. These two graphs show that you can use superior or outstanding as your top category. What is important is that you give respondents a choice above excellent. They also conducted interviews to look at the differences between um, these groups. What they found was that guests who responded poor or fair tended to have some pretty heavy complaints. Those who responded good had some complaints and some good things to say. Guests who responded excellent were totally satisfied with their experience. They had no complaints, but they also weren't completely blown away. Guests who responded superior or outstanding not only didn't have any complaints, but they were supremely happy with their visit. They felt it was beyond excellent. The results of those interviews help us to frame the conversation. What results do we want to see from our overall experience rating? We don't want guests to have any complaints, so we want to reduce those good, fair, poor responses. We're happy when people are satisfied with their visit, but what we really want is to exceed their expectations. For that reason, excellent becomes our neutral category. Ideally, our superior ratings grow while our good, fair, poor ratings decline. I hope this video has helped to demonstrate to you why the overall experience rating is a better indicator of exceptional museum experience than some commonly used scales or satisfaction measures. I've shown you how this instrument can help decrease ceiling effects and increase validity. Happy evaluating!